here in the Hendrik Favort building opposite the parliamentary complex. Conference is scheduled for. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry to have disrupted your Saturday afternoon. I will first read the short statement in English, uh, in Afrikaans, and thereafter in English, and then add a few comments. Een opvolging van my openingstoespraak in die parlement kan ek nou aankondig uh, Shall I start again? Gentlemen uh, here in front, you bothering the television cameras at the back. After I finish, you can get an opportunity to take a few photos again. Ek begin oor. In opvolging van my openingstoespraak in die parlement kan ek nou aankondig dat meneer Nelson Mandela op zondag 11 februari 1990 teen ongeveer 15 uur by die Victor Verster gevangenis vrygelaat sal word. Gisteravond het ek meneer Mandela in Kaapstad ontmoet tesame met ministers Viljoen en Koetsee. Gedurende hierdie ontmoeting is meneer Mandela ingelig oor die regering se besluit aangaande sy vrylating. Ons sal almal graag wou sien dat meneer Mandela se vrylating op een waardige en ordelike wijze plaasvind. Om dit te bereik is ambtenare tans betrokke in samesprekings met belanghebbende partye ten einde hulle die geleentheid te bied om geskikte relings te tref. Twee aangeleenthede is ook tydens die gesprek tussen my en meneer Mandela geopper, namelijk die toestand, die noodtoestand en die posisie van persone wat vonnis sit ten opzichte van polities gemotiveerde misdade uitdien, sowel as diegene wat sodanige misdade gepleeg het en hulle self nou buiten die land bevind. Ek het die belangrikheid beklemtoon van die skep van sodanige omstandighede, wat my in staat sal stel om die noodtoestand op te hef, sonder om die handhaving van wet en orde in gevaar te stel. Ten opzichte van die posiesie van persone wat betrokke is in polities gemotiveerde misdade, het ek aangedui dat, terwyl dit een saak is wat hanteer moet word tydens onderhandeling, verkennende gesprekke daaroor intussen kan plaasvind. Meer kan bestaan oor die regeringse oprechtheid om een rechtverdige bedeling wat op onderhandeling gebaseer is te skep nie. Ek doe nou beroep op meneer Mandela en alle ander belanghebbende partye om hulle bijdrage te lever in die daarstelling van een positieve klimaat vir onderhandeling. Die oor van die wereld is thans op alle Suid-Afrikaners gerig. Almal van ons het nou die geleentheid en die verantwoordelikheid om te bewys dat ons in staat is om op vreedsame wijze een nieuwe Suid-Afrika te skep. In persoons of my opening address to parliament, I am now in a position to announce that Mr. Nelson Mandela will be released at the Victor Verstaat Prison on Sunday, the 11th of February, at about 3 p.m. Yesterday evening, I met with Mr. Mandela in Cape Town, together with Ministers Fulyun and Kutsia. During the meeting, Mr. Mandela was informed of the government's decision regarding his release. We would all like Mr. Mandela's release to take place in a dignified and orderly manner. To attain this, government officials are at the moment involved in discussions with parties concerned in order to afford them the opportunity to make suitable arrangements. Two issues were also raised during the discussions between me and Mr. Mandela, namely the state of emergency and the position of persons serving sentences for politically motivated crimes, as well as those who have committed such crimes and who are now outside the country. I stressed the importance of creating conditions which would enable me to lift the state of emergency without jeopardizing the maintenance of law and order. 
regarding the position of persons involved in politically motivated crimes, I indicated that while this is a matter that should be dealt with in negotiations, exploratory discussions could take place in the meantime. I want to emphasize that there can no longer be any doubt about the government's sincerity to create a just dispensation based on negotiations. I call upon Mr. Mandela and all other interested parties to make their contribution towards a positive climate for negotiations. The eyes of the world are presently focused on all South Africans. All of us now have an opportunity and the responsibility to prove that we are capable of a peaceful process in creating a new South Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, this announcement and tomorrow will bring us to the end of a long chapter. What I have announced today was started by my predecessor a number of years ago. Since the moment that Mr. Mandela met him at Toynois, and since the moment that in that discussion Mr. Mandela clearly stated his commitment also to peaceful solutions, it has become a certainty that he would be released. Also in my two discussions with him, late last year and last evening, I came to the conclusion that he is committed to a peaceful solution and a peaceful process. The government is committed to negotiation. The government is committed to bring about through negotiation a new constitution which is fair and just to all the people of South Africa. I hope that now that this chapter has ended, that the world and more especially all the people of South Africa will grasp the opportunity and play whatever supportive role can be played towards a peaceful conclusion to the process which has started. I believe that this now fulfills all the preconditions which has been laid down. We're not working against checklists. We're doing what we sincerely believe to be in the best interests of South Africa. Uh, obviously, there are still some of the preconditions which have been set by, from various sources, which have not literally been met. But the most important stumbling blocks in the way of negotiation, in the way of, of positive developments to create a climate for negotiation, have now been addressed to my mind. The question of security, the question of the actual process of release is that which is being discussed now with interested parties by officials of the government. The state will secure the position of Mr. Mandela while he is in custody of the state. Uh, as regards the rest of your question, when Mr. Mandela is released, he becomes a free man and uh, he owes not it, uh, he doesn't owe it to me to uh, inform me of his program. I haven't asked him about it either. It really took place, yes, in a very civil atmosphere and uh, he is a friendly man. I like to think that I'm also a friendly man. And uh, yes, uh, the discussions really took place in, in good spirit. Uh, he's an elderly man, uh, he's a dignified man, uh, and is an interesting man. My statement, the final test is the situation on the ground and everything will depend upon the question whether we get an increase in unrest or whether we get a decrease in unrest. I really do not want to speak on his behalf. I can only give impressions and my, uh, I went to great lengths to explain why the situation is as it is with regard to the state of emergency, and uh, uh, that particular question you must ask has uh, sources of information available to it, uh, its official sources, reports from its security forces, its police, wherever they are, 
factual reports which come in regularly, which are all assimilated at one central point, analyzed and studied. Uh, we deal with such things in a very scientific manner, and we know what's going on in every corner of our country. Well, what I meant, sir, is stability. Stability is a situation where people can feel safe, where people who want to go to work can do so, where people can live a normal life without intimidation, without threat. Stability is a situation where you do not have arson in a country because of political debate and differences. Stability is a situation where you do not have deaths as a result of political strife. That is the sort of stability we're striving for. Obviously, in any country, at all times, you have crime. And uh, we go to great lengths to draw the necessary distinctions between ordinary crime and uh, politically related instability. We've just won an election stating that as our goal. That is the mandate that my party asked of the electorate. And that is the mandate that we received. There's a misconception that we do not want to give full citizenship rights to all South Africans, also to black South Africans. As a matter of fact, we've already received such a mandate from the white electorate in an election in 87. It is no longer a question whether all South Africans must get full citizenship rights. The question is how to structure it, how also to accommodate the diversity in a non-discriminatory manner of our total population. The fact that we have minorities, but nonetheless, the clear commitment is that the system must give full class A citizenship to all South Africans irrespective. Do you expect to continue to deal with you now on that basis? I follow an open door policy, and uh, should he come forward and should he be prepared to play the role of facilitator to interest himself in promoting a climate for, the, uh, for negotiation, should he interest himself in promoting talks, even talks about talks, yes, that open door is also open to him. Please, um... <laughs> As far as the release of Mr. Mandela is concerned, his presence is totally irrelevant. His willingness to act as a facilitator has been published wide, widely and uh, over a fairly long period now. I didn't discuss it with him as such again last night. Mr. There is an element of uncertainty, obviously, with regard to everything which lies in the future. None of us can exactly say what will happen tomorrow and the day after. It is really our hope that with the steps which we have taken, that it will make a contribution and that it will bring us soon to the situation where it can be considered. We revise this situation almost on an ongoing basis, almost on a day-to-day -day basis. And we are as, as, as anxious as anybody else to have the state of emergency uplifted as soon as possible. Negotiate, no, I didn't say that that is a matter for negotiation. I said that the question of political prisoners is a question for negotiation. State of emergency was imposed by the government because of a state of instability throughout our country. It will be a government decision to uplift it, and the test will be whether the stability has been restored sufficiently so that we can do so.